Good morning, Zeo here, and Warhammer 40k is for everyone. Well, except for you. We don't want you. Um, yeah, you or, or, or your friends or, or anybody else who disagrees with our political opinion. So let's get into it, shall we? And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you should go ahead and do so now. Like it if you like it, dislike it at the end if you dislike it, share it out across the entire winter, winter webs, winter webs, winter webs. Anyway, the interwebs, <laughs> if I can speak, I can't speak. I can never speak. I also can't read. That's, that's a problem with the Tennessee um, education system. Anyway, <laughs> so with that. But yeah, with with everybody else going on the whole, uh, what was a few weeks ago, everybody going on the, hey, we're, we're brand, we stand for this, blah, 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 that sort of stuff. Warhammer 40k, of course, threw its hat into the ring because, you know, it, it wants to be political everywhere except for um, the Middle East uh, because, you know, that that's the one place they, they actually can't spout these opinions. Uh, just like Bethesda and everybody else. <laughs> anyway, because brands are purely political when they think they have something to gain from it because they only listen to Twitter, not realizing that Twitter is a very, very small population of uh, the population, uh, you know, here in the States and Europe and stuff like that. Uh, but they, they think that's everybody who's playing their game, and they listen to them, of course, because if it's a kerfuffle on the, the social medias, then obviously that must be everybody. But anyway, so this video is about politics and video games once again, and uh, we, we've talked about this numerous times, and again, Warhammer is coming out with this. Warhammer is for everyone except for the bigots we don't like because you disagree with us kind of thing. So uh, that and we're also going to talk about Warhammer um, going after people for using Warhammer in their name or titles and stuff like that. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how this is going to go because I'm, I'm going to put four Warhammer 40k into the title. So with any luck, it will get missed because I'm so such a small, small creator. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, and over on BitChute, of course. They're probably not going to do anything, so it's going to be good over there. That's the only place I don't get censored at. Over on the YouTubes, you know, usually I'll get a thumbnail censored or something else censored or copyright claimed when there's no basis for said copyright claim and stuff. But anyway, Warhammer is for everyone. One of the great powers of our hobby is the ability to bring people together in a common cause to build bonds and friendship that cross divides. We believe in and support a community united by shared values mutual of mutual kindness and respect. Which, uh, to be totally honest, happened by default. <laughs> when it comes to gamers, tabletop gamers, video gamers, whoever, you know, we don't really care who you are. Uh, for the most part, your identity on that level, the whole sexual identity or the sexual preference or your gender, really doesn't matter to most people. Uh, uh, most gamers, anyway. It's just you want to play about play we're okay with playing with you um you know you you want to talk about the hobby we love to talk about it we don't shut up about it when we realize you're into gaming of course too um will we test you there's possible possibly you know a chance of being tested you know with with certain questions among other things and do we have jerks obviously every group of people when you get a large enough group are going to have those jerks who actually might be racist or misogynistic or whatever ist or phobe you want to put in there because you know you, you can't get them out <laughs> i mean as much as you want to try and eradicate these people from existence it's not going to happen uh, you know as long as man has free will you're gonna have people who are just gonna hate somebody just because it, it's it sucks but it it's true there's nothing you can do about it there's nothing i can do about it um you know regardless of what statement is put out there they're still going to play if they're going to play but anyway our fantasy settings are grim and dark well yeah it's 40k um anyway but that is not a reflection of who we are and how we feel the real world should be 
well, that's cool. Nobody ever questioned it. Not going to lie. Nobody has ever mentioned it and gone, oh, hey, you know what? I bet this company is just as dark and grim as the fantasy world that they put out there for people to play. Anyway, we will now, or we will never accept nor condone any form of prejudice, hatred, or abuse in our community or in the Warhammer hobby. Well, how are you going to police that? Uh, until, unless you plan to send somebody out to any, every person who buys one of the, the books or the figures or something like that, I highly doubt you're going to actually be able to enforce that. Um, but whatever. Anyway, we will continue to diversify the cast of characters we portray through midis, uh, miniatures, art, and storytelling so everyone can find representation in heroes they can relate to. Why? I, I still don't understand this argument, right? Like, people make it all the damn time. You know, you, you got to have something that you can relate to, that, that you can, you can, that represents you. Why? Like, seriously, who wants to be represented? Anyway. Hmm. Never mind. There are people who want to be represented. They're the ones making that stupid argument. Uh, you know, when you play a game, you play to escape the real world. You don't want to be playing a game and be, you know, bashed over the head with real world events. So let's think of a real, real world equivalent, right? So um, several years back, right? We're, we're talking 10, 20 years back, right? Um, you had what we, what you would call like the Bible thumping right i guess political wise right uh and they, they'd be the the whatever was right of center and they were you know beating on the bible and going you know uh, uh video games are sin rock music is sin dungeons and dragons is is a, a corridor to satanism and magic the gathering is you know the the the, the way into getting getting in with Satan and all this other stuff, right? You know, you had those people out there, and we still do. <laughs> that, that's the sad, the sad part. We still have people out there who think that, right? And, and now we have, instead of the right giving us this sort of stuff, we now have the left giving us the exact same purity thing with a different face, and that's it. Instead of using it as the word of God decrees that this is hate-filled or something and they're getting their panties in a wad, we have the left getting their panties in a wad over diversity or inclusion and all this other stuff as if it hadn't happened before. Every time you get something that comes out, it's, oh my gosh, it's the first woman this or the first gay that. And it's like, Okay, what about the others? <laughs> I mean, there have been people in the past who've been in that similar circumstances. Maybe it was different. Maybe, you know, it was still a woman fighting against aliens or whatever. And we had Samus Aran in, in gaming. You know, she was fighting aliens there and all this other stuff. It's not like it's a new thing to have a female tackling whatever the issue is or being the main playable character or all this other stuff what what really is an issue or not really an issue but what's really going on is marketing demographics right majority men play games uh you know somebody is probably typing the group of these are 50 percent split and split now like 54 percent of gamers are totally female um yeah i got that uh of course most of those are on the mobile phone right uh you know most of them are playing mobile games they're not actually playing game games that we're actually talking about like call of duty and other stuff their highest percentage is more match for three sort of thing uh doesn't mean that women don't play things like world of warcraft or or uh, diablo or modern warfare or stuff like that it's just there's a smaller percentage of people playing that uh you know and people will play what it is that they want to play regardless right um but the market demographic for a lot of these things are dudes believe it or not because dudes tend to play these games on default more or more likely to play these games therefore they're marketed towards them and what they think or what the marketing agencies or whatever think that these people would like to play 
right? <laughs> Doesn't mean that we can't have something marketed towards the other demographic because we do have things that are marketed towards the other demographic out there, uh, you know, or games that are just made and then more of the player base happens to be of that other demographic. Anyway, um, I think The Sims is probably a good example of that because that seems to have a much larger female community to it when it comes to looking online for videos and things like that than it does a male component or a male community for that. But it doesn't mean that men don't also enjoy The Sims. I'm one of those people, of course. Make your jokes. Go ahead. Hmm. Anyway, the point is... <laughs> long tangents aside warhammer 40k is is making the generic we the company believe in x and all this other stuff and once again they're fracturing their community as a result right and if we feel the same way whether or whoever we are we're glad you are a part of warhammer community if not you will not be missed if you don't think like us hit the road that's exactly what this statement says right um you know and that's bad for business <laughs> i'm just just gonna say it right here most of the warhammer online community from what i can see which is why i kind of debated not talking about this um a good chunk of those from what i have seen as i've looked at things on reddit and other stuff are the kind of people who push this kind of rhetoric and think that it's okay or whatever to to push this and push anyone who might have a dissenting opinion out the door and all this other stuff you know for the sake of inclusivity we have to exclude certain people am i right and um, that's ridiculous look uh, you may not agree with me but that doesn't mean you can't come to the table and play we don't have to vote for the same president we don't have to vote for the same congressperson we don't have to be on the left or the right together in order to enjoy a game together um which is this weird thing where you know the past several years past 10 years or so we have pretty much ultimately fallen into this thing is if you're left of the center you have to automatically hate everybody who is center or on the right and they are you know nazis or whatever and you can't associate with them which is ridiculous uh and the same thing for some people on the right but not all usually when it comes to the right side of things they're way more welcoming and are willing to have a conversation with you just from personal anecdotal experience of course because i'm not really you know i'm more center than anything i guess I need to take a test, I guess, and see where I actually sit on that. But uh, the other thing to talk about, of course, is 40K going after people using the Warhammer name, right? So I found out that there's this dude called Arch Warhammer, who is now no longer known as Arch Warhammer, I guess, on, uh, on YouTube. Um, I have no idea who this person is, but apparently he is a... Um, he records a lot of... Uh, what what's the word um story i can't think of the word um lore there we go he, he's he seems to be more of a war a lore uh kind of thing for warhammer and uh probably something i want to go back and watch at some point in time because i've never really looked into uh those kind of channels on the youtubes before but i do watch a lot of elder scrolls lore videos so i know several people over on that side who do a lot of the lore on that and i really enjoy those kinds of channels but apparently this guy has gotten himself into to quite quite a thing where um he's essentially been back blacklisted by war games because of course he has um, for having whatever views it is that he is having but um it, and also on top of that he's been forced to remove warhammer from his name you know as a fan if your channel is dedicated to a particular thing that sucks like that that feels like a really bad president to to have at that point um when say you know this guy's channel was what arch warhammer so you know it'd be funny if he legally changed his last name to warhammer <laughs> and then they could fight over that that would be an interesting thing to see anyway 
but now you've got the the Twitter nobody, right? Will Rose, no, not if Arch Warhammer is being given sponsorship deals to advertise it. He's a white supremacist, a misogynist. He might, uh, he's been caught starting harassment campaigns against 4K, 40K players, myself for one. Which makes me wonder if it really was or if it was just criticism or banter or talk back and forth or if they started it and he he defended himself because we've seen it play out in multiple communities now right where you spout an opinion people like will rose doesn't like it and then will rose comes at you along with like 500 other people just continuously going at you for weeks and weeks and then the second you say anything back they're just like oh my gosh we're being harassed somebody please get rid of him it happens all the damn time and that for one i hate it i i that's it's bullshit anyway uh, and it was response to this tweet here we want some warhammer styling in your uh, world warships game find out how you can add skins captains more uh, to your fleet um, dear world warship players and warhammer fans due to human error on our side a rather controversial figure in the warhammer community arch warhammer was involved in our marketing activities for world of warships and uh, world of warships and for world of warships and world of warships legends okay that's the second thing okay um we're working on our Warhammer collaboration, we will specifically uh, warn by Games Warpshot not to work with this influencer, and we agree to it. Thus, we ended sponsoring the person we don't want to be affiliated with him filled or failed to fulfill an important and rightful request of our partners. And I've got the hiccups again. Damn it. Anyway, we take full responsibility for the incident and sincerely apologize to you and the Games Workshop for letting this happen. We are, again, uh, we are against any form of discrimination, except for the kind that we actually aren't or are for. Uh, once the issue uh, became evident, we have terminated the partnership with Arch Warhammer and ceased the sponsorship. We also have sent a request to take down the promotional video to avoid such incidents in the future. We will ensure our internal communications are improved and influencer and the influencer we plan to work with are vetted better. Best regards, World of Warships and World of Warships Legends team, where he essentially is being canceled and blacklisted from all of that sort of thing. Um, again, I don't know who this person is or who they actually are. And because of the political state that we have found ourselves in over the past few years, when you do see something like that, it now has gotten to the point that I have to question everything about it. When, when a company comes out and says, you know, and does something, I have to sit there and go, is are, are, are you doing it because of you know you, you you actually want it to do this or is this got some kind of political leaning behind that you're virtual si virtue signaling to a specific group or whatnot to say hey look at us we're so inclusive but don't look at our middle east account because it's so totally not going to be there or anything kind of like star wars and stuff when uh you know, they had the Star Wars poster for The Force Awakens or whatever it is, or, or The Last Jedi, who, whoever, no, who cares? Anyway, whichever one it was where they've got, like, the poster here and then the poster in China where um, Finn is really, really tiny and in the background suddenly, and, like, he's not an integral part of the story or anything. Still should have been the main character, by the way. I think, Disney, you missed out on a huge opportunity of making a reformed stormtrooper into a jedi that's on you not me uh <laughs> but it but it should have happened it should have happened anyway uh you know you, you see it with all these other companies where the political thing of the day of the week or whatnot is totally the thing that they're going to follow because they think that's the thing that they need to follow to put more butts in seats or to more people to buy their product while unless also angering their more hardcore fans because their hardcore fans are actually paying attention to things and going you know if you really think that why are you doing it differently in china why is it different in the middle east you're, you're being nothing but total hypocrites at that point and we don't like that or outright just 
you know, telling their harder core uh, players or their main players or whatever it is, their fans, that you, this is not for you. This is for somebody else who we think is a larger group than you. And then it, it, it fails horribly, like, for instance, Ghostbuster 2016, when, when that one happened. If you didn't like it, you were an ist, you were a phobe, you were this, that, and the other. You're not a real Ghostbusters fan. You know, that sort of thing, right? And, um, you know, I, I find it incredibly short-sighted and delusional, of course, uh, for them to be thinking in that, you know, in that kind of mind frame, because that's, that's not their core audience. If their core audience is coming out saying, hey, what is this? What is this for? What, what are you doing here? You might want to actually try listening to them. Uh, that's how we wound up with Sonic, was somebody listening to the core fans of Sonic and going, that's hideous, you might want to change that, or this is probably going to bomb. And they did, and it killed it in the box office, from what I understand. Um, and now we can actually see another one uh, possibly come into the future. And if the new Ghostbusters, of course, the Ghostbusters 3 comes out and does the same thing, maybe finally companies will sort of learn that maybe the fans are the ones you should listen to instead of the, you know, the really loud minority on Twitter and Facebook who, who, who are going to tell you this is what you have to do. You need to check these boxes in order to, to hit all the check marks. And when you're doing things like that, nobody wins. You know, you wind up with lackluster characters, with shallow characters, with a story that just isn't that great. And, and because you're too busy trying to check boxes, then create a good story. Anyway, let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below, and I will talk to you later. See ya! Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment, smash that like button, and always subscribe for more. And of course there are other videos floating around somewhere on the screen, so click one of those and see if you can find something that uh, suits your fancy. Till then, I'll see you later. Bye.